so this this next band is a band that I hope plays the, the blue stage because uh, if they do, I'm I'm burning the blue stage to the ground. <laughs> I, I, I honestly that is think a like non-ironic blue stage contender. I want it so bad. I honestly, it 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 totally honestly like I think whatever festival this next band plays at, like will probably be the festival that we all travel to, like next year I, or 2020. I, it, it, we'll it see might what have happens. to happen. We'll I mean, see what happens. Because... There, 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 there's a pit, and, and I need, I need to get in the pit for this album. Can uh, I? Can, I mean, I Jackson, was trying to, you go ahead. I'm trying you, to you, you introduce this. I need it. <laughs> I'm chomping at the bit. I've been waiting time for this all fucking day. All fucking let's week. let's reveal. Uh, let's let's reveal. Go ahead. It's called. This album is called "You Won't Get What You Want" by Daughters, and and it makes my brain hurt. It, this album, uh, uh, it, it sounds uh, scary, and it sounds bad. And it makes it makes me feel like I, I, I can't listen to this album in public because of the way it makes me feel when like I'm listening to it and other people look at me. Yeah, I, I am. need to understand like how there's right off the bat the thing that is most like incredible in this album is just the visceral like way that they are able to use the loud sounds to make you just feel things in your chest. This album is, it is a, just for any of you maybe who aren't familiar, uh, Daughters are a noise rock band. They are from uh, Providence, Rhode Island, I believe. They put out, uh, their first two records were more of kind of like a metalcore, thrash metal kind of style. It's like post-hardcore. Uh, yeah, yeah, a lot of that kind of stuff. And then sort of, and then in 2008, it was 2010, yeah, eight years ago. Yeah. Uh, 2010, they put out uh, I believe it was a self-titled album called Daughter that was more of a noise rock sound that was uh, much better received than their first two records and people really liked it and then they sort of went away for eight years and then they're like we have a new album coming out and it's called You Won't Get What You Want and I don't know what they were doing for eight, those eight years probably some, some spooky shit uh, because uh, oh boy is the lead singer of Daughters not having a good time <laughs> This album. Here's the thing. This album is called uh, this, You Won't Get What You Want, and it is correct. It, <laughs> it, is, it, is, it is as accurate advertising as you can get. Basically, <laughs> this album is about a, a violent, chaotic, manic destruction of the self. Uh, it, is, it is an album that is constantly raging against forces that are almost entirely internal, uh, and it is in many ways about just the the the, the crushing brutality of, of being alive in corporeal existence. It's a fun time. It it's is a, a documentary, real... is what you're trying yeah. to say. There is. I, actually, it, it, I was it, going to say it, there is it, a documentary it, 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 about the making of the sound. By the way, there, yeah. there is one on oh. YouTube if you want to watch yeah. that, Jackson. After it's this like podcast, a, it's like five minutes or something like that. But it's really interesting to delve into the creative process that they were going forward with this record because essentially. I, they were just traveling around. They they wrote this over the course of, like I would I would say at least two or three years because it said they talk since about fifteen on their Wikipedia page, yeah. which is amazing for a thing we'll get into later. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, Maddie, I was gonna hold you to that analogy from earlier. Oh boy. So like... um, <laughs> this album, uh, it is. Uh, I I mean this in the nicest way possible. Uh, you are in. Um, do you guys? I think we all know that the 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 Bill uh, the Bill Hader skits, the Stefan skits from SNL. Yeah. This, is, <laughs> this is the uh, this is like a dark evil version of Stefan describing like some like secret ass. This is the diner dirty... scene from Mulholland Drive. Yes, yes, that's what it is. Yes. Yes. What it is. This is the diner <laughs> from Mulholland Drive. This is like. <laughs> This is like, you know what? The food here, it's all right, but I need to go back to the dumpster. I need to go to the dumpster and see what they're what's back there. And the, and and this is this is what? Like 46 minutes of the it's big of, of, yeah, this is 46 it, minutes it, it of, of the trash man scaring the fuck out of you, giving is, giving you is, a heart attack. It is pretty much as long as the rest of their entire discography up to oh, this yeah. day. And it's not like it's fucking they, like, toned it down to they're just like, yo, let's let's do that for 48 minutes and see if people can handle it. And I, I couldn't, I could not handle it. It is only it. This album, it is so this this sort of style. It borrows from a lot of different kind of of the loudest and and least uh, fun hang uh, uh, rock genres, including yeah. uh, noise rock, 
Uh, there's a lot of kind of kraut rock influence. There's a lot of repetition on this album. There's a lot of no uh, wave. No wave. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of kind of uh, math core stuff, stuff that sounds like early Swans records, kind of uh, stuff that sounds like bands like This Heat, uh, kind of post punk stuff. There's a lot of This Heat. There's a lot of battles on here as well with battles. how intricate the instrumentation is. I was gonna mention yeah. from from like the beginning of this album, uh, the intro track. What's the name of it again? City City Song. City song. Oh the my drums God. on it are really fucking the about. the drums on that song especially, and, and throughout the entire album, but like a, but specifically that song are fucking terrifying. Mm. They're so yeah. menacing. Yeah, yeah. The, 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 those like sequence sixteen notes of just of just bass just just hitting yeah. your ears repeatedly over and over and over again. That song is incredible because. One of the things that's just that's just pure fucking terrifying about it. If we're talking about bass lines, I want to talk about the the bass line on Less Sex Ooh, because yeah. that, yes, is that is really, fucking dirty. It is it is pure Nine Inch Nails core, like yeah. to to and and it is so that that song is one of the most important songs in this whole album because if you don't have that song, that is like at least pretending to like try to get you to enjoy it. Like uh, otherwise, it, it is. It is the break that you absolutely need, and, and sort of acts as a transition point uh, into the the back half of the album. But yeah, it's back, a necessary breather for the fucking onslaught that comes after it. Yeah. Oh, and, and the onslaught that comes before it. It comes right after the flammable man and the Lord song back to back, <laughs> which is uh, something we'll get to. We, we haven't even gotten past the city song. Uh, city song is the first song on this album, and it is terrifying because it it, it the the like vocals of it are delivered in this sort of spoken word style uh, that never gets louder. No matter how much louder the guitars get, the, the spoken word stays the same volume the whole time as he's repeating this, 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 this album straight up. I, I are, I, I mean, I, I have to think about it, but it is one of the lyrically, one of the best written albums of the decade mm. easily. It yeah. is, this stuff is straight up gothic poetry it is yeah. it is beautiful it is heart-wrenching it just stabs you in the chest repeatedly once you start to understand what these songs are about and what they're think, saying i think gothic poetry comes with a certain connotation though because then you think oh it's just sort of like very like dramatic. overly emotional like over dramatic yeah, yeah yeah and it it comes also with this this aura of um like amateur yeah. kind of yeah. writing but yeah it could, could not be more untrue yeah exactly like, like it could not be further away from all of those stereotypes I, well, I think and that... the, the scariest thing about the lyrics on this album is how like pertinent and grounded they are like that's how i was stunned to figure out this album was had been written since like 2015 because it sounds like they just like not to undercut the skill of course but like to put it in an analogy, it sounds like they just watched the news for the last two months and then like made an album about it. It's so timely. Mm. That the, the yeah. city is an empty glass. Words do nothing. No one sleeps. Graciousness is lost. The betrayed yearn. Shops are closed. There is nothing. The city is an empty glass. The buildings shriek and everything weeps. Like it's so post-apocalyptic and so nihilist and so fucking dark. dark. But it's the thing. I think the thing that it's really a, a perfect concert between his his perfor- Alexis Marshall, the lead singer, his mm-hmm. his vocal performance, and also the writing of it. Because there's something about the way all of the songs on this album, his vocals are mixed super dry. Like there are almost no, there's almost no reverb or effects on his vocals, and he doesn't really ever sing melodically. It's just sort of this spoken word delivery that that just alternates between getting. I, he sings melodically on like daughters and on uh, and on less sex and so there are other moments, mm-hmm. but like, but like really for the most part, it's basically just like at what intensity is he performing spoken word? Yeah. But uh, it, it, he doesn't come. No, no, with no, no, this... no, 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 no. It, it's not. Spoken, it doesn't have any of the sort of like artifice you think of as being spoken word. Right. It's, it, yeah. It's delivered in this fiery performative way that does feel like it does work as like a rock frontman. Like yeah. it, he, uh, the, the 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 lead singer of this band reminds me. A lot of uh, the frontman of Idols, a lot of the front man, uh, the lead singer of Girl Band, uh, a couple, a couple other. Like it's a very. But the thing is, is that, that like because of the dry effects in the vocals, there's just something about 
the way that he says these lyrics where throughout this album you can just you, you are constantly reminded of the fact that he's a real person saying these things these aren't like lyrics this is like a you feel like this is a person that is just saying these things and, and there's there's just this incredible like truth and honesty that they're presented with that just it just cuts to the, when you when, the way he's, he, he delivers and performs these lines like, when on on long road no turn the second song on the album yeah the way he performs that refrain of everyone climbs up high and falls real far a little is all it takes a little is all it takes it's just it's just so devastating and so like captivating like he, yeah. he's just completely like performing mental break on every song here in such a compelling way oh my god yeah, yeah I it think is absolutely the... bone chilling both in like delivery and in writing I mean, fucking satan in the weight that bastard had a head like a matchstick face like he was sucking concrete through a straw some faces not even a mother can love are you kidding me are you kidding me with there, that there, jesus we could we, we could do this on 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 so many ones here uh we really could <laughs> we, we, and we and we really will for for sure <laughs> uh yeah. Guest House. Um, no, Guest but... House is like the crown jewel. Of that. Yeah, guess, guess House. Guest House is the closer of this and is like one of one of like the it's towering actually achievements. Fucking towering. It, it's one of the t- towering achievements of music, I think, of the last couple of years. It's uh, one of the it, like most difficult to listen to songs I've heard in a while, and I mean that in the best way possible. Yeah, um, it, it is this song that begins as a like pure. The first like two to three and a half minutes of the song are just like pure unbridled terror performed basically the, the 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 gist of the lyrics is that there's a house and he's locked out of it and he's screaming let me in let me in i'm pounding and knocking and pounding and knocking let me in and as the song continues this sort of like gothic almost like stoner metally like drone works its way into it that just sort of starts to consume the track and all of a sudden, the guitars just disintegrate. And after, I didn't want to get to this until later, but it's fine. After after 48 minutes of some of the most abrasive, like soul-crushing music you've ever heard in your entire life, the album gives way to uh, about a minute of like this beautiful swirling ambient piece with synthesizers and like strings and it is so beautiful if you listen it has this effect where like it's beautiful if you listen to just guest house and it works every time but but if you listen to the entire album and then you get to that moment of where it just the storm clears it is so so emotionally powerful like i i have i have fully just collapsed into weeping like when it happens it really it is, feels it really feels like a like a spiritual like twin or successor to uh good morning captain off of spiderland which is also oh, really dark good comparison. It, it really, wow that is a great comparison it really it really is also dark because it, it really does feel like like the release that he feels there's no way that's mm-hmm. not him dying yeah like that's oh, this, yeah. there's no there's no way that that, that that moment of, of, of final serenity is not like him being put out of his misery. Uh, this album is, is, is not, is not a, a, a fun hang, as I've said before. Uh, and one of the most uh, best examples of that is, uh, holy shit, how is the flammable man real? How can any band play that loud? Uh, and also, mm. one of the reasons, and I just pointed this out a little before the podcast, I'll tell you how a band plays that loud. Uh, during the big noise breakdown in the middle of the flammable man uh there are actual gunshots in the mix there's just straight up gunfire that's sampled underneath yeah. all of the guitars and you can't even tell at first because it's that fucking loud it's the flammable man is basically the song that is uh it starts out at a thousand miles an hour and it, it's like a, it's so many the whole album kind of feels like this where it's like the songs need to maintain forward momentum or else they're like gonna completely disintegrate like the only thing that's keeping these these mel- and these song structures from just falling into complete nothing is the unrelenting forward uh, pulverizing momentum of the tracks and like, these songs sound like they're trying to outrun something okay yeah, like, I was okay can, so I, can I can I can I make this comparison because I've been wanting to say it for like five minutes now it's like okay. basically this album was made I, I, I watched uh, Terminator 1 and Terminator 2 like back to back a few weeks ago this is like 
like if the resistance came back in time and we're like let's make an album pretty much like oh we have a few <laughs> years left until like the terminators come let's just make some albums and like this is what the, this is what they made like that it's like the album was recorded during sarah connor's dream sequence of of the nuking of los angeles oh, basically that's good that's, <laughs> yeah, better, than, that's better than what i was gonna say shit yeah um this, this album uh it, it it's it's deeply deeply disturbing and it, it it makes me feel awful and it also makes me feel incredibly exhilarated and through like there's the great thing of this album is that it has so many moments where it's using like the rock the rock sounds to to hurt your brain uh but then they they, they do they do they pace this album so well and they do just enough of like like the reason they hate me is is incredible incredibly noisy and disgusting and filthy but it's this great way that they managed to like basically turn it's it's like their version of like a queen of the stone age song almost like it has this like swagger to it and and uh i i would be lying if all week i have not been yelling to myself in my apartment don't tell me how to do my job <laughs> it's just <laughs> give me, give me it, son it, of a bitch Whoa. it also has one of like the best one-liners on the album you. Uh, it's 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 that that is the, like the most idols that this 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 album gets at any moment where it's just like it's the one moment where he seems to be having joy because it's the one moment of the album where the 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 anger is sort of uh being this album is there's an existential dread and there's an in, internal conflict there's very rarely it's not an album where it's like fuck you like there's not really an and it's never uh, externalized it, it, it's it's just this creeping like like existential terror that like lives within all and we'll, we will get to that when i talk about ocean song in a second which is like has ruined my life forever uh but yeah uh it's it's just it's so it's so specific in the way it kind of handles some, like obviously there are lots of songs about how like everything's bad and there are lots of songs that are like ah this is meant to be loud and scary but there's something about this that doesn't feel performative it feels it feel, like there was a I, there was a review i saw on rate your music that said like there this band sounds like it's not that they chose to make this kind of music. It's like these. This is the only way they could play these songs. Yeah, yeah, I read that it, one too. Exactly. I, I, I really, I, I'll, I'll just get into it. Yeah, Ocean Song is fucked up. It's like the story song on this album, is, and it is, it is, it is really, really fucked up. It's about a guy named Paul, and Paul comes home and he parks in his driveway, and the fucking garage door isn't working, and he snaps, and he. Re- runs away like a wild animal and then there's this refrain in the track where basically the song has this like uh, skipping tom drum and these like weird sour like guitar things that are very swansea and it it uses that to sort of baby the storytelling part of it but then every once in a while it will just suddenly ratchet up into these crazy noisy guitars and it goes go run go run and it's basically about this guy that like when faced with the endless cycles and mundanity of life and just the un the unending banality of existence just sort of like sees his son in the driveway coming home from work one day and just is overtaken by some animal terror and he and he starts running and the way that he describes all of the stuff is like is is truly inspired stuff like all I'll just read the one uh, section. Uh, Paul turns to the right, tracing the unkempt bushes aligning the house, and the bed's cracking beneath. He reaches over to uncouple the lash, and sweat forms of his brow and the back of his neck, and years of servitude are at last present. You can feel them in his bones, and Paul is overwhelmed with the urge to cry, to crumple down to his knees and release. But pride gives it this shove. What? This is, like, straight up, like, better than anything I read in English class, dog. This is incredible. <laughs> this, is, this is better than every... Great Gatsby, better than that, better than all that dumb bullshit. <laughs> it is, inc- and the fact that this is happening over like, like the most wild rock music I've heard this year, easily, is just truly insane. This album is really good. I could talk about it a lot. Lily, why don't you talk about Daughter? Because I've been talking too much, and Daughter is is something that needs to be talked about. Oh yeah, I'll talk about Daughter. I don't know, like. Just to touch on something that was said earlier, like I think one of the most upsetting things about this album is that it has these like stark 
sickening, like surreal lyrics that feel so like apocalyptic. And yet they're very relatable in a literal way. Sure. Oh yeah, like this no, album yeah, is they... just speaking about the world, and that makes you more upset that you're listening to this, thinking, "Oh yeah, I feel that in my day to day life." <sighs> I don't know. Yeah, you there's, actually there's, 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 there's something deeply unsettling about like how how dark this album is, and how it is if you're able to personally connect with, and and there's something unsettling about how like truly t- terrified. It, that he is as a performer and how you find yourself able to connect with him, or at least I do personally. Uh, it's it's really something. And like Daughter is, I I think if I had to pick one, Daughter is probably my favorite song on the album lyrically solely. I, I think there's lyrically for sure. I, I think Guest House is probably like the greatest like complete accomplishment of the album. But just Jesus Christ, like so, so this album is really good refrain. Like the the the, the the rock music of it is so repetitive and driving and like and like pummeling and they they combine that with incredible use of these refrains that just that just get stuck in your brain and you're mad because they're they're really fucked up things that have stuck in your brain like like uh, there are no saints anymore and oh love is a tired whore and oh love is a tired whore like and then the knowing they'll die here and there line at the end which just cuts to just the spoken word of him saying knowing they'll die here and there knowing they'll die but this album has so many moments where it plays with dynamics in that way. Like both Daughter and uh, City Song end with all the instrument- instrumentation cutting out and just leaving the exposed spoken word in a similar sort of way that Guest House cuts out at the end. And and every time it happens, it's like my 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 stomach goes all the way up into my throat. Like, like it's a physical reaction. The way that they're able to build tension and suddenly. And, and just suddenly give you nothing but bare, devastating poetry. It's it's incredible. It's like a truly transformative art experience to go through. Yeah, it really has some of the best like sloganeering there's been in music since like fucking I can't believe I'm about to say this, but remain in light. Like the amount of like free associative <laughs> one liners on this album, it's incredible. Ah, oh, fucking oh. Yeah, the line on the reason they hate me. They got a name for people like you, but I didn't take the time to write it down. <laughs> so <laughs> good. Yeah, and the end of Daughter just fucking it kills me. Cause like, and I get this feeling with Guest House, too. These aren't even metaphors. These are just like facts about my reality. And to hear them like reflected in music that way, like the especially on Daughter, just this idea of like, the callousness with 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 which we do let people die and just like the fact that people are going to be crushed under the wheel of society is like a fact of our world and no one does anything about it is such a like resonant and upsetting fact that like uh it, it's yeah those lines ruin me emotionally and again with guest house just like it's it's just a lot of people's internal monologue right now, guest house. There's not there's nothing about it that is like layered or symbolic. It is really just like the sensation of being alive in this day and age, which is amazing. Like you do you do respect that they were able to communicate that through this music, but like fuck, is it difficult to listen to? <laughs> yeah, exactly. And daughter is one of the best. Uh, li- like changes of pace for the album. It's an, as a song that like didn't click for me on initial listen because it just sort of, I mean, I mean when you're listening to this album for the first time, there's some wild shit that's gonna grab most of your attention on the first listen. Like I don't know, uh, every second of the flammable man, including yeah. uh, the refrain, is something burning here or is it me? With those like nightmare carnival guitar riffs. <laughs> oh my god, that song is fucked up. Um, the but breakdown yeah. of that song fully makes you want to get in the pit for like the first time in a decade. Like <laughs> I don't give a shit. I will slam dance in my kitchen to that song. No one it, can stop me. It, it it is truly and and and, and uh did like I was saying, daughter is this really cool like gothic rock song that has more m- melodic tendencies than than most things in this album, which isn't saying much. But like that's the thing in this album, like this album, uh like forces like just forces you to submit to it and then once you you sort of once your brain is like okay this is what music is now it then gives you actual music in a way that is so like like is so much more viscerally effective 
um, because yeah, of the, the way that like, only, like, the, the, the pummeling melodic, riffs. The fact that there are only like three melodic moments on this album, and they're all very spread out, just makes them like that much more powerful. Exactly, yeah. And especially with like how pummeling and repetitive a lot of the the more like uh, abrasive shit is. We could talk about this album all day. We've talked about most of the best songs on here. There, uh, I would just like to mention a couple of things. Uh, the riff on the reason they hate me is like filthy and is one of the the just pure pure nastiest riffs I've heard since "Keep Your Eyes Peeled" by Queens of the Stone Age. It is it is that level of just just grime and and is a perfect uh way to start that song uh long road no turns is like incredible that song is 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 really like the one that sort of like unlocks it for me on first listen in, in terms of like that noisy rock sound and it's really it's really the out the moment like the way that uh city song transitions into uh long road no turns is just so incredible because city song is this just slow build and just like death by slow suffocation uh and then and then just have it just break loose in this just frantic like completely manic uh, uh song is just it's it's so incredible every time and every time it just sucks me in in a way it was like if i if i listen to city song in its entirety straight into long road in her terms i'm in like i'm all the way in now strap up baby yeah uh the song this album is incredible i could talk about it all day i will stop now